Materials are commonly classified depending on their current carrying capacity. Materials are classified as conductors, semiconductors, insulator. We are familiar with conducting and insulating materials. Conducting materials are good conductors of electricity. Examples of good conductors are copper, silver, aluminium, etc. Insulating materials are bad conductors of electricity. Examples of insulators are porcelain, glass, quartz, rubber bakelite, etc. The electrical wire used in houses consists of a core made of conducting material like copper or aluminium. The core provides an easy path for the flow of electric current. This core is covered with some insulating materials such as rubber, cotton, PVC, plastic, etc. These coverings provide e protection against short circuits and also against electrical shock. There is another group of materials, such as germanium and silicon. These are neither good conductors nor good insulators. At room temperature these materials have conductivities considerably lower than that of conductors, but much higher than that of insulators. It is for this reason that these materials are classified as semiconductors. Semiconductor are the materials whose ability to exhibit electrical conductivity lies between conductors and insulators. Semiconductors are classified into two. Those are intrinsic semiconductor and extrinsic semiconductor. Further these extrinsic semiconductor is classified into N-type and P-type. Semiconductor devices, such as diodes and transistors, are made from a single crystal of semiconductor material. Example germanium or silicon. To make a semiconductor device, the very first step is to obtain a sample of semiconductor in its purest form. Such a semiconductor, in pure form, is called an intrinsic semiconductor. To understand the phenomenon of conduction of current in a semiconductor, it is necessary to study its crystal structure. Here shows a simplified two-dimensional representation of the crystalline structure of a semiconductor. The core represents the nucleus and all the orbiting electrons except the valence electrons. The valence electrons are shown around each core. Each of the four valence electrons take part in forming covalent bonds with the four neighboring atoms. A covalent bond consists of two electrons one from each adjacent atom. Both the electrons are shared by the two atoms. At absolute zero, all these valence electrons are tightly bound to the parent atoms. No free electrons are available for electrical conduction. The semiconductor therefore behave as a perfect insulator at absolute zero temperature. Let us now see what happens at room temperature. Room temperature 30 degrees Celsius may be sufficient to make a valence electron of semiconductor atom to move away from the influence of its nucleus. Thus, a covalent bond is broken when this happens the electrons becomes free to move in the crystal. At particular time a vacancy of an electron is created which is termed as hole. However this movement of electrons generate conduction through semiconductors. Extrinsic semiconductors are the impure form of semiconductor materials formed by adding either pentavalent or trivalent impurity into a pure semiconductor atom. The process of deliberately adding impurities to a semiconductor material is called doping. Doping is done after the semiconductor material has been refined to a high degree of purity. A doped semiconductor is called an extrinsic semiconductor. Extrinsic semiconductors are basically two types. The first one is N-type and second one is P-type. N-type extrinsic semiconductors are formed when pentavalent impurities are doped. And P-type extrinsic semiconductors are formed when trivalent impurities are doped. N-type extrinsic semiconductors are formed when group 5 elements like phosphorus, antimony, bismuth are doped to a pure semiconductor crystal. Let's see the crystalline structure of a N-type semiconductor. Here at a pentavalent impurity prosperous atom is doped to a sample of intrinsic silicon. Let's now focusing on phosphorus atom. The phosphorus atom has 5 valence electrons. Four of these form covalent bonds with four neighboring silicon atoms. The fifth electron has no chance of forming a covalent bond. This leads to the presence of an unbounded electron that is held free to move into the conduction band. This electron is known as a free electron and its movement raises the conductivity of the material.
In n-type semiconductor there are a large number of free electrons and a few holes. The electrons are the major charge carriers in n-type semiconductor. When a pure or intrinsic semiconductor is doped with group 3 elements of periodic table like boron, gallium, aluminium etc. that these are known as the p-type extrinsic semiconductor. Let us have a look at the figure shown below that represents doping of aluminium to a pure silicon material. As we know that an aluminium atom contains three electrons at its valence shell. Also, silicon contains total of four electrons at its valence shell. So, three valence electrons of aluminium atom make covalent bonds with three electrons of silicon. However, in this case, a vacancy of an electron or a hole appears. The movement of this hole is mainly responsible for the conduction in the p-type semiconductor to take place. Hence, in this case, charge carriers are holes rather than electrons. I hope you all understood about semiconductors. Explain more about semiconductor devices in future videos. Thanks for watching.